In our storage policy walkthrough video, we changed a couple storage policies. For this video, I want to go to the back end and talk about what happens on vSAN. And we'll do two different examples. We'll do a RAID 1 to RAID 0 example, and then a RAID 1 to RAID 5 example. This policy change is really simple because all vSAN has to do is drop one of our data components and then drop one of our witnesses. And then we have a RAID 0 object. And we don't have a choice if that's component 1 or component 2. vSAN makes that determination for us. So if we had a 100 gig VMDK, we'd go from 200 gigs with our RAID 1 FTT of 1 object down to 100 gigs with our RAID 0 object. Let's move on to our second example. This one is a little bit more involved because we're converting from our RAID 1 mirroring policy to our RAID 5 erasure coding policy. So on the back end, the first thing that vSAN does is creates a brand new object. And so for this example, we're using a VMDK. It creates a brand new RAID 5 VMDK object. You might be thinking, wait a minute, we're going to have two VMDKs? And that's correct. But vSAN is a UID-based system. We assign UIDs to our object. So let's say our first object, that's FE12, that's its UID. And actually, the UID is a lot longer than that. I'm just really shorting it down just for this example. And then our RAID 5 VMDK, let's say that's AB23. So now we've got two different VMDK objects with two different UIDs. The next thing we start is a resync. We start copying that data, it's just basically a copy-paste operation, from this RAID 1 FTT of 1 object to our RAID 5 FTT of 1 object. Once the resync is done, we'll have a transition period. We'll transition from our FE12 VMDK over to our AB23 VMDK. And that'll be seamless on the front end. And so from a storage perspective, with our 100 gig VMDK, with RAID 1 FTT of 1, we're using 200 gigs. And then with our RAID 5 FTT of 1, we're using 133 gigs. I want to go just a little bit deeper before we wrap up this video. And I want to talk about the storage consumption as we convert from RAID 1 over to RAID 5. We have our VM using that FE12 VMDK. And that's taking up 200 gigs of storage in the environment. We then have our RAID 5 VMDK. That's our AB23 VMDK. We'll then begin our resync process. We'll start copying our data from our RAID 1 object over to our RAID 5 object. And since we've got both those two objects side by side, we're using additional capacity in the environment. We're using 333 gigs. 200 for our RAID 1 object, and 133 gigs for a RAID 5 object. And this is where I see some people get into trouble. As their vSAN data store starts to fill up, they think, I can convert from RAID 1 to RAID 5 because I know it'll save me some space. Not taking into consideration, we need that temporary space, that slack space, to allow that operation to complete. So if you are thinking about converting from RAID 1 to RAID 5, just take a look at how much free space you have, and maybe do them one at a time or a couple at a time to get through that entire operation. Once the resync completes, we'll then transition over to the new object, in this case, AB23. We'll then delete the old object. And as a result, we'll reduce our storage consumption down from 333 gigs down to 133 gigs. Wrapping up this video, we walked through two different types of policy changes. The first one was going from RAID 1 over to RAID 0. And all we had to do for that one was delete one data component and one witness component. Our second example was going from RAID 1 over to RAID 5. And this one had a little extra storage considerations because we had to build a brand new RAID 5 object to resync our data to. So making sure we had enough slack space in the environment, enough free space in the environment to complete that operation. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.